All right, so when we look back, what are the zeros of a function? I think somebody back here had said it. Go ahead. The, where the parabola hits the x-axis, otherwise known as the x-intercepts. Now, with this stuff, if we can't access that information by memory, every time we see those directions, we should be writing it down until we can access by memory. Now, nowhere on here does it say, show me a graph of the parabola. It just expects you to know how. And so what we're going to do is let's go in and use our calculator this time. Negative x to the second power plus 1. I think if we all hit a zoom and then choose number 6 standard, I think we're going to be able to get a decent look at this. That'll put us all in the same window. So there's that parabola. Question is, where do we see it on this graph? hitting the x-axis. Okay, let's just talk about the x values for that. Uh, I'm doing number five, negative x squared plus one. And so then when we go to look to talk about the x-intercepts, um, somebody said they're at zero, one, and zero, negative one. We're just gonna talk about these zeros or these x-intercepts as being negative one and positive one. Make sure you're not writing them as like, an ordered pair, I do understand that this would be negative one comma zero and positive one comma zero. Maybe that helps you to understand why these guys are called zeros. They're two separate points, but we're gonna talk about them like this. Now, one thing I can tell about this parabola before I even go looking at it, is that it's going to reflect over x because of the negative. It's gonna be fatter because of the four, and it's gonna hit the y-axis at 16. Now, my graphing window doesn't go up to 16, but the thing is, is I gotta focus on where it hits the y, the x-axis anyhow. I'm gonna leave my window on standard. Let's go put this in as four x to the second power, and that's not a power, plus 16. And then when we hit graph on this one, I know I'm not gonna see the maximum of it, but I am gonna see the zeros. So I can stay in this screen. I knew the maximum was gonna hit up at 16. What are the zeros of this one? Negative two and positive two. And then maybe we just remember that that's negative two comma zero and positive two comma zero. I'm be looking for these. Go ahead. Bring it up here, please. Wow, where's this one going to hit the x-axis, or the y-axis? Holy cow, so we're not going to see this one, and it is negative. So let's see if the same thing happens. I wonder if we can see it. So clear this out, negative x squared, so it's the parent reflected, but then it's translated up to the y-intercept of 64. All right, I'm interested to see how far down, well, how fat it is by the time it gets down here. Ooh, wow, not surprised. So that parabola's maximum is way the heck up at 64. I don't need to change my window to that. I just need to focus on where it's hitting the x-axis. I think so. And you know, if you start kind of looking at this, eight and negative eight, that's interesting. Those are the square roots of 64. And remember again, these are points. X is eight, negative eight, y is zero. X is positive 8, Y is 0, and that kind of speaks to why we call these the zeros of the function. It is when Y equals 0. Now, if we think back to our notes from yesterday, um, what the heck was I going to say? Lost it. Don't even remember what I was going to say. Oh, yeah. So when we think back to our notes from yesterday, we can have, do you guys remember we could have 1? two or no zeros yeah. our x-intercepts they could hit the x or, i'm sorry yeah our x-intercepts they could hit the x-axis once they could hit it twice like all of these are or they might not ever hit it if the vertex is somewhere um above or below and it's opening up or down anybody get into this negative nine x squared plus one i expect real skinny reflected over x real skinny and y intercept at one negative 9x squared 
Plus one. Oh boy. Oh, why did I even go there? Ooh. Okay, so on this one, this is interesting, you guys, because it looks to me like the zeros are probably between uh, zero and negative one and zero and positive one. Let me give you a, a way that we can go find this. There's a command above trace that says calculate in blue. Hit your second key and calculate. And you notice how it says zero. Your calculator is saying, I'm going to go find the x-intercepts if you use this calculate command. Second trace, we're on calculate. We're going to press enter on zero. Now, it's saying right here, what we've got to do is tell our calculator left bound. I'm going to move my arrow down on the left-hand side here so I can say, all right, find the zero somewhere between where this point is and the zero on my graph. It says a question mark. I'm going to press enter. So now it's saying, what do you want the right bound to be? And I'm actually going to put the right bound at, one, at zero because I know it's somewhere between negative one and zero. And then it says guess, and I press enter, and I can see here that the zero is actually at negative one third. Now, the thing about this one is, is if this zero is at negative one third, what's going to be the one on the positive side? There you go. Do I need to go back through that command? Not necessarily. I am going to do it quick, like for a minute, just for anybody that wants to do it. I'll do it on the other side. I went into calculate, find zero. Now I'm going to go for the other one. Left bound, I'm putting at zero, press enter. Then it says find me the right boundary, and I'm just going to move down below where that hits the x axis. And then when I guess, there's proof of our positive one third. So our calculator can do that for us. I'm going to make a little note down here on this one that we used second trace to get that calc. And then we chose, what was it, number two? And we used the zero command. All right, now, in numbers 9 and 10, if you would, grab your rulers. Parabola opens down. Let's think about this. They're giving us some characteristics and just say, you've got to put this somewhere. The vertex is at 0, 5, and it opens down. It doesn't say anything about fat or skinny, wide or narrow. So I'm just going to put, let's see, the... Vertex is at zero, 0,5. I'm going to drop my origin down to about here. And then the one thing that we all have to have in common is that vertex right there. Now, the next thing we have to have in common is we all need to be make, creating one that is opening downwards. So I want you to think about putting points on your document if you want to, you can put them in the same place mine is. I kind of know how these act. The parent acts like if I go one to the right and one down, I get to another place. And then what I notice about the parent is if from there I go one to the right and down three more, I get to another place. So I'm just kind of putting what I remember about how the parent function looks. Now, if I was copying the shape of the parent, I'm wondering if any of you could tell me what this y equals equation is. How do I flip the parent? How do I take that parabola that's opened up and make it open down? I think we, I just graphed negative x squared. What would have to come after that for that vertical translation to 5? You got it. This is just kind of a bonus round right here. I talked about how I use the parent's characteristics. Now, I think number 10 has a lot more flexibility. Number 10 has a lot more flexibility. What's the only thing we should all have in common on 10? 
the lowest point. So what is that telling me when it says the lowest point? What else can I call that? There you go, bam. So we all have to have this vertex. Everybody has to have a vertex there, but there's nothing else we have to have in common. Create one on your paper. I don't care if you make it fatter or skinnier or up or down. The vertex just has to be at zero four. If you wanna keep it kind of simple, I could help you with this one. If you wanna keep it simple, if some of you turned it upside down, good for you. I know the parent acts like this. And then when I go out, I go up more. I know the parent acts like that. So one example would be just take the parent and translate that parent up four. That's just one example. I'm gonna put a few on my paper. You don't need all kinds, but I am gonna put a few on my paper. I'm thinking, well, why don't I just do the negative x squared plus four. So we can, you don't need to have more than one, but I just need you to understand that there can be. You don't need to have more than one, but just realize there can be. Good deal. Now, moving on to problem 11. This is our last one together, and then you guys are gonna be investigating some stuff, and you're gonna have some homework today, I believe. The function f of t equals negative 16 t squared plus s sub o, I'm interested in this, they're not telling me what it means yet, represents the approximate height in feet, that must be the f, um, approximate height in feet, there's my f of t, t seconds after it's dropped from an initial height of s sub zero. Okay, so I'm looking for how far was this falling object um, dropping from a tennis ball falls from a height of 400 feet. All right, so fantastic. First thing that we've got is they just gave me the tennis balls falling from 400 feet. So my function is going to be f of t equals negative 16 t squared plus 400. Now, if they're talking about this falling, what I realize is going to happen is that, okay, so here's a parabola. Let's just imagine, shoot, this is gonna go across the y-axis at 400, isn't it? It's gonna cross the y-axis at 400. It's gonna be opening down. Opens down. And this guy's gonna make it really skinny. Now the thing that's kind of interesting here is when we get that height of 400, shoot, I don't like this picture. I'm gonna put a little sticky note over this. Um, here we go. So let's say we've got, there we go. This is what this needs to look like. From this height of 400, they're talking about this tennis ball going down like this. That's in reality, it's only half the parabola. In reality, it's only half the parabola. I'm gonna go and do this on this side because the tennis ball isn't falling both left and right of this 400 foot mark. Now it says, after how many seconds does the tennis ball hit the ground? Time is on this axis. So what they're looking for is for us to find this Y or this X intercept or this zero, we gotta find the zero on the X axis in the positive direction. What's the zero on the X axis? in the positive direction. And so I know it's gonna act that way. I'm gonna go put this in my calculator. I'm gonna see if maybe we can use a table and find the place where y equals zero. When y equals zero over here in positive x is. So first things first, negative 16, I'm gonna put x in place of t. My calculator doesn't like t. Negative 16x squared plus 400. 
Now with this one, I, we're not gonna get a decent picture of this when we go look at the graph because that 400 is the y-intercept. I'm gonna go straight into the table. Oh boy. Ooh, look. You guys see the peak? <clears throat> straight into the table. So here's where the function starts to actually make sense, the 0, 400. The negatives don't make sense. If you can move around in your table, oh, look at that. It's not hard to find. After how many seconds does that tennis, that object, it wasn't a tennis ball, how many seconds did it before it hits the ground? Five. This y-intercept over here is five comma zero. So that tells me that after how many seconds does a tennis ball hit the ground? You guys probably have some room over here. Five seconds. Because one of these intercepts is five zero, x-intercepts. What would be the other one? Yeah. The zeros of this function are negative 5 and 5. The only one that makes sense is the positive 5 because we're talking about time. We're not going back in time. <laughs> then it says, suppose the initial height is decreased by 384 feet. Okay, so now where are they dropping it from if they've gone and brought this down 384 feet? What's 400 minus 384? Somebody go find that. So really we're going f of t equals negative 16t squared plus 400, but we've got to take that 384 away. What's left? Perfect. f of t equals negative 16t squared. Now we're from a height of 16 feet. They're asking us the same question. If I'm dropping from a height of 16 feet, my y-intercept, that height, let's go change that in our y equals negative 16 x squared plus 16 feet now. Much shorter drop. Oh yeah, look when I hit the graph I can see it's going down a lot faster and it looks like it's probably after one second. It sure is. Because the zeros of this function are at negative one and positive one but the only one that makes sense is positive one. We'll work through and talk through more of those types of problems together in the future. Um, you will not see something like this on your quiz. We'll be practicing these throughout, and then you will see stuff like that on your test, but we'll keep practicing and talking through problems like that. <clears throat>